Well, again, I got the unit circle here. Here, try to draw as best as I can. This is usually a joke I use every year uh, for my students. And they kind of enjoy it. It never actually works, but what I do is I wind up my arm like this and I say, okay, I'm going to draw the first perfect circle in you know, human history. And you know, everybody gets excited about it. You know, wind up your arm and then you bring the marker. And then it never becomes perfect, just like that. That's just kind of how the way it goes. So basically what it is, is it's an XY axis uh, with a circle around it. And then I partition uh, this circle with dotted lines, which means the lines aren't actually there. It's just for your reference. And uh, the lines are actually very special, 30 degrees or uh, pi over 6, but I'm always going to I'm going to refer to them by degrees because it's actually easier for me. 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90, well that's 0, uh, 120, 135, uh, 150, 180, 210, 225, 240, 270, uh, 300, 315, 330, 360. Basically I took in intervals of 30, these ones are in intervals of 30, and the middle ones are in intervals of 45 degrees. A couple things to know uh, that are actually pretty interesting. Uh, all students take calculus. Uh, all of them are positive, sine is only positive, tangent is only positive, uh, it's about the same chemistry, uh, cosine is actually positive here. Uh, something else to keep in mind, now this is all assuming that the radius of the circle is 1. I like working with a radius of a circle of 1. I think it's the most fundamental, best way to do it. There are many problems that don't work with a radius of 1, actually. I'm not going to sit there and do that. I just, I just don't do that. It's, it's not something I like to do. You know, it's, it's not difficult. I mean, it's just basically, if, if the radius weren't 1, it would be x equals cosine times the radius, y equals sine times the radius. But since I assume that the radius is 1, I don't really even have to worry about that. Okay. That said, uh, x is going to be my cosine theta values and y is going to be my sine theta values. Now that might be a little bit difficult to comprehend, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. That if I took the, um, let's start with the cosine. The cosine of 30 degrees. I'm going to write it in coordinate form. The cosine of 30 degrees comes out to uh, root 3 over 2. And the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Now what's very interesting is this. And a lot of students don't make this connection, but once you do, it's just so easy. I'm not going to do this for every single point. Here's a point on my circle. And if I drew it correctly, it would be you know, even more fantastic. But again, And this is assuming that the radius of the circle is 1. Basically what it's saying is this. This point on the circle, its x value is at square root of 3 over 2, which is... Um, 0.8666 something, and one half. It's up one half over that. Yeah, I know, my circle's not drawn perfectly. Big deal. Eh, what are you going to do? Okay. Uh, for 45 degrees, my cosine is root 2 over 2, which I think comes out to like 0.707 or something like that. And my sine value is root 2 over 2. So, if I go, you know, 0.707 and 0.707 up, that's where I am in terms of my uh, x and y axis, or x and y point on the unit circle. So I went 0 0.707, 0 0.707. A lot of students get confused. There's like, a, um, how come it's not one half at, you know, I mean, besides, you know, just using the trig function, that's the best way I can really explain it. This one comes out to uh, one half. And square root of 3 over 2. Now what's really interesting is this. As I look at my points for my x values, my x value is getting smaller as my angle keeps going up. You know, square root of 3 over 2 is bigger than square root of 2 over 2, which is bigger than 1 half. That's really cool. And my y value keeps going up as my angle goes like this. Because my y value is now up, my x value is less. You know, when I understood that, when I finally understood that, well, it wasn't finally when I got it, it was okay, actually. It made things so much easier. I said, well, this, you know, the, the sine of, uh, I'm sorry, the cosine of um, 30 degrees has to be bigger than the cosine of 60 because the x value is further along on the unit circle. Uh, going with that, I asked my students, can anybody tell me what the cosine of 0 is? You know, given that it's the x value. And so he says, uh, is it 1? Yeah, it is. 
Go ahead and plug in the cosine of 0 into your calculator. You're going to get 1. And if you plug in the sine of 0 into your calculator, you're going to get 0. That's the reason why. It's in respect to the unit circle, or where the placement on the unit circle on an xy graph. Same thing here. This uh, quadrantal you know, angle, as it were, is at 0, comma 1. This one is at negative 1, 0. This one's at uh, 0, negative 1. I hope you can see that one. I'm not going to go ahead and fill in everything, but I will say this. Uh, if I want to find out this value right here, okay, its reference angle is 30, that reference angle is 30. This one and this one are the same. Not this one and this one. It's this one and this one. It's the same distance from the x-axis. So these two are the same in terms of x-y value. These two are the same in terms of x-y value. These two are the same in terms of x-y value. Uh, there's a little bit of a stipulation behind that, and I'll go ahead and show you. So I want to find this point. So this would be 150 degrees, or uh, 5 pi over 6. Uh, cosine and sine, that is, of that angle. Uh, what it is, is square root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now that's not actually entirely right. And here's how you can tell. All of them are positive. That means the sine, cosine, and tangent are positive. The sine is positive, the sine is the y value, so that's going to be positive. But it doesn't say the cosine is positive, bam! And if you want a better way to think about it, it's this. If x equals the cosine of theta, that means cosine will always be positive here, because this is where x is positive. Sine will always be positive here, because that's where y is positive. x and y are positive here. Uh, the reason why the tangent is positive here and here is because a positive divided by a positive is positive and a negative divided by a negative is positive. But when you got one positive, one negative here, and one positive, one negative, it means the tangent's also going to be negative. Really cool stuff. So let's do this one right here. You know what? I don't even want to figure out what the cosine of 120 is, and I don't want to figure out what the sine of 120 is. I'm just, okay, it's a one half comma square root three over two, and my sine is positive, which is my y, but my cosine isn't finito. Let's do one more just for, you know, kicks, as it were. And you can fill out the rest of the circle on your own because I'm not going to. And you can always look online if you want this. Yeah, you know, I can't. No, that's garbage. You can always look online if you really want this. Let's do this one. This is in the fourth quadrant, which means only the cosine is positive. The, that's 45 degrees from the reference angle. That's 315 degrees. Um, it's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Check, cosine's positive, sine's not, so that's a negative root 2 over 2. Uh, if I want to find the tangent, I just take this one divided by this one, which is a negative divided by a positive, which is negative, and root 2 over 2 divided by, negative root 2 over 2 divided by positive root 2 over 2 is negative 1. Really cool stuff. If you want to figure out your secant, your cosecant and your cotangent, all you simply do is, um, you know, mix it around. That's, you know, pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, what else can I say besides that? Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. I probably want to do some negative values. Um, one thing to be uh, wary about, though, um, if the tangent, and this is what you have to look for when you do the secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Uh, you have to take this into account. Make sure you do take it into account, otherwise you're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, the tangent of 90 degrees would be undefined. And what I mean by that is, if the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine, or the y divided by the x, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Something for you to think about when we start doing graphs. Um, you have to check that with the secant and the cosecant too, because there's undefined intervals for that as well. And uh, I guess we can, well, uh, I guess I can have you think about it this way. If, um, if, the, mm, if the sine is 0, at 0, that means that the cosecant at 0 degrees is undefined. And the reason very simply for that is because the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. So if 0 goes in the denominator, undefined. Really cool stuff. I, I don't want to get too much into that because I'd rather save that for graphing. But that's a brief introduction of the unit circle. 
You have to fill this in on your own, obviously. And uh, by the way, when you repeat, like if you go to 360, it's like this. Or if you go to 360 plus 30, which is a uh, 390, that's your cosine value, that's your sine value. Really cool. Well, all you really need to know is really know the first quadrant. And then just apply this and this, and it makes it so much easier. Or you could just use a calculator too, but either way. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.